I'm Mark Simpson. I'm here at the beautiful Hawthorne Hotel in Salem, Massachusetts. Welcome to Twitch Talk. While in Salem, Massachusetts to attend the Witches' Convocation, Darren and Samantha visit the House of the Seven Gables, where Samantha is harassed by a mysterious bedwarmer that follows them back to the hotel, where Darren is promptly arrested for stealing it. Tonight we'll be discussing Bewitched episodes number 203, The Salem Saga, and number 204, Samantha's Hot Bedwarmer. Both episodes were written by Ed Jurist and directed and produced by William Asher. The main cast includes Elizabeth Montgomery as Samantha, Dick Sargent as Darren, Agnes Moorhead as Andorra, Aaron Murphy as Tabitha, and the first appearance of David Lawrence as Adam. The additional cast includes, in alphabetical order, Harley Bear as the desk sergeant, Irene Byatt as Lady in Plain, Jack Griffin as the cab driver, T.J. Halligan as Man in Plain, Virginia Hawkins as Witch, Joan Hotchkiss as Miss Ferndale, Isabel McCloskey as Widow Patterson, Maureen McCurry as Mildred, Maggie Malooly as Stewardess Number 2, Ron Masak as Officer Number 2, Noam Pitlick as Newton, Nancy Pretty as Stewardess Number 1, Richard X. Slattery as Officer Number 1, A.T.N. Vizi as Airport Clerk, Jack Wells as Captain Nichols, Dick Wilson as Mr. Potter, Bill Zuckert as The Judge, and Pandora Spox as Serena. Now we'll check in with David for a little bit of the historical information on these episodes. David? Hi, I'm David Pierce, author of the Bewitched History Book, available now at BearManorMedia.com and Amazon.com. And I'm here at the House of the Seven Gables. The Salem Saga is episode number 203 of the series and the third episode of the seventh season. Production completed on August 7, 1970, and it broadcast on October 8, 1970. Samantha's Hot Bed Warmer is the 204th episode of the series and the 4th episode of Season 7. Production completed on July 16, 1970, and it broadcast on October 15, 1970. Mayor Samuel Zoll declared October 8, 1970 to be Bewitch Day in historic Salem to commemorate the airing of the first episodes filmed in the Witch City. Now let's join Mike at the Witch House, where I'm sure he has some continuity issues to discuss. Take it away, Mike. Hi, Galaxy Groovers! <laughs> I'm Michael James here, author of The Bewitch Continuum. I, Samantha, take this world, Darren, and Samantha 70s, which just came out as an ebook. Hint, hint. I am here in Salem, in front of the Witch House. But anyway, okay, let's talk some continuity. First, episode 203, The Salem Saga. Look at the car. It's got a Massachusetts registration sticker on the windshield. That's pretty cool. I guess they must have uh, rented a car there in Salem. Um, also, um, when Endora changes the sign from an old hag witch to a pretty young witch, I mean, it's beautiful, it's great. Samantha's right, that image, the old hag image is a misconception. But Endora herself said in the pilot that mortals just think which is right around on brooms so i don't know why she would perpetuate that stereotype we know how against that stereotype that she has been over the years um when we're getting into episode 204 uh samantha's hot bedwarmer 
when Serena goes back into the past, Serena is surprisingly compassionate toward the Widow Patterson. But yet, Serena makes absolutely no effort to act like someone in the 17th century. She just keeps on going with her 20th century language once she inhabits the other version of herself. And it's funny, but it doesn't make any sense. Um, when Samantha pops in, uh, well actually when she goes in to the police station to get past the desk sergeant to get to Newton the bed warmer, why doesn't Samantha just pop straight into the room? Uh, you'd think uh, that she would. The desk sergeant probably wouldn't have heard her. And um, actually the biggest problem I have is between the two episodes. Um, the recap um, of uh, the Salem saga going into um, Samantha's hot bed warmer. It is re-edited. Uh, there's um, incongruous dialogue in it. Um, it's very expositional. Um, and yet, when you went out of um, to go or not to go, that is the question, into Salem Here We Come in the previous two episodes, that um, segue was flawless. The episode just started. It just picked up right where it left off from the previous episode. They didn't do that here, and it's really, really strange. Anyway, we are gonna take a quick break and then join our panel of Twitch talkers to discuss Bewitch episode 203, The Salem Saga, and 204, Samantha's hot bed warmer. And if you think that's hot, stick around, because you're gonna see Twitch Talk's very first music video right here on the second season premiere of Twitch Talk, and I gotta split this scene before someone turns me into a bed warmer. Catch it on the flip. Y'all bored at home? You got nothing to do? The Bewitched History Book will come to your rescue. Over 700 pages of info and fun You won't want to put it down until the day is done huh? If you're a true bewitch fan Then all we can say Is get online and order yours today Welcome back to Twitch Talk, and along with Mike and David, uh, our Twitch Talker panelists joined us. Let's say hi to Anna. Yay! And June. Yay! And Susan, Ontario, Miss Ferndale. Yay! And Taylor. Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, Bewitched episode number 203, The Salem Saga, and 204, Samantha's Hot Bed Warmer. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the panel. Um, you'll give your comments on the episodes, and, and we'll do this. It's a two-parter, so we're just going to, like, do it. as We're not going to do it like it's two separate things. We'll just do it as, like, one giant episode um so just uh give your comments about the episode um if you noticed any bloopers or anything like that or just anything that happens to come to mind so um and then after that uh we're going to do our ratings give your uh make your comments and then give your rating um and you'll rate it from one to four stars one being the worst four being the best so let's go ahead and let's start with uh anna i think darren really proves himself with the salem with the salem song and i'm just sort of saying this to me the salem trip or however i feel like it's kind of a turning point for them because he really shows loyalty and the most acceptance of 
witchcraft that he ever has before. He cooperates with Hepzibah and takes the demerit seriously. I mean, he goes along with it. It was just astounding. And then he decides to go to Salem with, with Samantha. And again, it shows loyalty and acceptance. Like, okay, this is what my wife does and I'm going to come along. I'm not gonna fight it. I'm not gonna try and keep her from doing it. He's accepted that this is who Samantha is. And a couple episodes later, says he doesn't want her to give up witchcraft. Darren is pretty much, I think, on the side of the witches in this, and so far as advocacy, I'm using all these words, like Darren's really on board with this, which is like pretty dated. Um, in the museum, he indignantly says, this bed warmer is bothering my wife. He's not trying to make excuses or, at all. Um, <laughs> or trying to cover up what happens. Um, he knows it's a warlock. And then um, he, then she had nothing to do with it to the cops. He's, gonna, he's going to protect her. And if it means that he gets in the witch world, he's going to do it. I love Miss Ferndale. I'm an archivist. I spend a lot of, I mean, I'm real invested in old things and you get really possessive. <laughs> you know, it's like, put your white cut cotton gloves on before you touch those. I just love how passionate she was and protective. She is just relentless. <laughs> I give this a four. All right, thank you, Anna. Uh, let's move on to June. June, what are your thoughts about uh, the Salem Saga, Samantha's Hot Bed Warmer? Well, first of all, it was just amazing to be there and to see some of these places. I just uh, think that was the best experience ever. But uh, So one of the things I just don't understand is why Endora just didn't pop to Salem instead of riding on the wing and then appearing on the inside of the plane <laughs> and then popping that man to the airport instead. Um, I just thought that was a little strange and uh, she was showing her powers off to mortals which I thought was also you know something they really shouldn't do. Um, you know I also thought that Darren was you know, not to contradict, you know, anything Anna said, but I thought Darren was kind of a jerk uh, several times to Sam, um, you know, about her keeping secrets and then accusing her of hitting him on the back of the head when, of course, it was the bed warmer. And, and he was just such a, you know, he was kind of mean about it. So I just thought, hmm, I didn't really care for that too, too much. Um, and oh, and Ron Masak's um, Irish accent kind of started coming and going every once in a while. I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> just a little something there. Um, uh, and I loved it when Sam went to the witches' council because I loved that dreamy, creepy music. <laughs> You know, with all the fog and everything. I just remember that. Uh, watching that as a kid, too, thinking, Ooh, it's so spooky. <laughs> and also, I just wanted to add that um, when Serena pops back into the past, um, I see her taking money from someone and stuffing it in her bodice. <laughs> and I was just thinking, what is Serena doing? Is she a lady of the <laughs> evening in Salem? <laughs> I was just wondering that. So anyway, um, being in Salem uh, makes me love these two episodes even more and just seeing things in person for my first time ever, you know, being in Salem. So I'm definitely going to give it a four. All right. And uh, let's move on to Susan. Okay. Um, I do enjoy these two episodes. The, the, my favorite part of the first episode is, is in the plane. I just think that is such a wonderful, intimate feeling of that being in the plane. And I think it was really a modern kind of thing to do at the time uh, to, to, to make a set that was like an, an airplane. Um, everything in that episode is so funny. And even though some of it's old, you know, look out there, do you see such and such? And course then they don't see it and I enjoyed uh, especially Endora being on the wing it just 
that to me just the full unadulterated joy of that flying suit and letting it flow in the breeze and, uh, and, and, and I think it even made the wing look kind of cold you know it is up there at that high elevation that they're at that it, you know it would be cold for her to be sitting on it but that whole sequence I just really really enjoy um, I, I love it when Darren says kindly ask your mother to please lower her flaps <laughs> that just cracks me um, then in the uh, I guess it's in the next episode when uh, Darren asks, another favorite line of mine is when Darren says, you witches have the dumbest rules and at the dumbest times. I think that could be used so many times through this whole, this whole, the whole show. The other thing I noticed that I thought was interesting was when Samantha is at the, at the witches convention and she's standing on the ground and she wants to go up and talk to her mother, she twitches her nose to fly up and we've never seen her I don't think I may be wrong but I don't think we've ever seen her do that but I did like how they had so many people uh, even though there weren't a lot of actual people witches and warlocks there the kind of puny looking when they first pan and show the crack the crowd um, but I like that they have and they've done this before where they have so many different costumes from different parts of the world to, to emphasize the fact that witches and warlocks are everywhere. They're not just an American thing. Um, I liked that. So, all in all, I would give, well, I'll give them a four. I, I, I think they were very, very clever. And I really I, um, thought they fit well into the story and uh, advanced the characters very well. So. All righty. And uh, how about you, Taylor? So rewatching these episodes, I thought I, I had forgotten how much the bed warmer plays a role in Salem Saga, in addition to Samantha's bed warmer. And so it feels almost like it should be called the bed warmer saga. <laughs> um, it would be so easy for her just to make another bed warmer and then boom, we're done. Like <laughs> make another bed warmer, put it on the rack. Um, but so I had a couple. I had a couple thoughts while I was watching this. The first one is I, I agree with everyone else who's talked about how fun the plane scene is, and I just remember thinking, you know, I've never been in a plane in 1970 before. It was fun to see like wallpaper on the wall of the fuselage or whatever, and um, the shot in the cockpit I thought was really fascinating. Like that would have been a really hard shot for them to. I mean, it's, they would have a big camera. <laughs> you can tell it's bouncing a little bit they're standing over the pilot's shoulders and then you see the shot from behind and it's just one big black cloud of smoke there's Endora's following them um so, so much pollution um when we get to the um to miss ferndale i i think that this is definitely the pre-yelp era of to the tourism industry because she's such she's such an asshole <laughs> I will remind you that you should not be touching the bed warmers or anything in the house. We will need to leave directly from here because there's going to be a tour starting afterwards. Like, I appreciate that efficiency, but man, that wouldn't fly well with Karen's today. Um, the only other thing I wanted to comment on is I love the female sexual empowerment in the episode. So, first off, um, Samantha gets Endora to do what she wants her to do by threatening to talk about her mother's affair to her father, which is totally against the television code at the time. I mean, that's a, a disrespected marriage and marriages were supposed to be respected. But then Serena, who's just not having it, uh, she has this opportunity to have this debonair warlock and she's like, mm, no, it was just a one night stand. Off you go. I thought that was a really fun um and it would have been really interesting for the audience to see something like that. You know, Bewitched in 1970s trying to compete, it's trying to be edgier. And um, and I think this that these couple episodes with their puns and, you know, the way they talk about him being a bed warmer. I mean, there's just a lot of wink, wink, nod, nod, and Bewitched trying to be edgier that I really appreciated. So I'll give it a four, too. Okay, so David, about uh, your thoughts and comments. Well, I have always loved these episodes. Everybody's mentioned the airplane scene, and that is one of my most favorite. 
I always try to pick a wing seat when I go anywhere on the plane so I can visualize Endora out there. <laughs> I like that the whole thing's about the dead woman. Um, I do think it's silly that why didn't Serena just pop Newton out instead of transforming him into an object? But it set up a really funny um, two episodes. I really thought the special effects of having the bed warmer go up and down and um, Samantha like pulling on it and Darren, I think I thought the whole usage of that, I know that it was a lot of like, uh, what's it called, mining on their part, because I really don't think they were pulling that hard, but it looked really good. And I love the bed warmer hitting Darren on the head in the convertible. <laughs> And I, and I love Mr. Potter seeing that, too, and laughing. <laughs> um, Miss Ferndale is way too much for me. She she says that people that steal antiques or whatever are the worst kind of criminals. Really, Miss Ferndale? <laughs> I mean, I know we were just coming into, like, the serial killer phase of America with Ted Bundy and all that, but there was still a lot of crap going on, and that's what her focuses is antique stealing. <laughs> um, I loved, loved, loved when they went to the uh, witch grounds. I loved, for what Susan said, I liked all the different outfits of everybody there. Um, I did count them the other night, and there was about, including Endora and Samantha, there was about 22 participants. But when you think about it, in your mind, after you've watched it, you think that there was like hundreds of people. So, it's just awesome. But anyway, all in all, love, love, love these two episodes. Always. Four stars. Four stars. All right. Uh, so let's move on to Mike. Well, you know, I, I always have more to say about continuity, but uh, do you like this? It's just a little something I whipped up to make myself comfortable in Salem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where do we start with this? The plane scene. I do love the plane scene, but I have to say, if you look really carefully, the clouds are only under the wing. Above the wing is blue screen, and you can tell it's blue screen because it whips in the wind from the fan being blown on them, and it bunches up a little bit in the corner. So I don't know, did they run out of time to blue screen the top of the wing? I don't know what happened with that. Um, the other thing, um, Endora just shows up on the plane. She's not on the manifest or anything, and uh, apparently nobody views her as a flight risk. Uh, if that happened today, man, uh, the um, Homeland Security would take her down with a taser, you know? Um, also, I found it kind of weird that Samantha and Darren and Endora are arguing about making the man disappear on the plane in front of everybody where they could totally hear it. In fact, and Samantha and Darren are standing up in their seats, so they're not even being subtle about it. And they're, uh, it's, uh, that kind of struck me as odd, but everybody's just sitting there. You know, it's not like they had the, you know, watch three seasons of The Office on, on front of their screens and not notice that so everybody could totally hear that. Um, I do love um, the Salem Saga as it is the first episode. We really see Adam um, at the top. Um, um, with, of course, Greg and, and Dave Mandel, um, Lawrence, um, and just t Tabitha's camaraderie with him uh, immediately, you better mind me. It's just such a wonderful moment. It really kind of sets it up. Um, Salem Saga is also the episode which finally, after six seasons, establishes Samantha's age. They only ever hinted at it before. I know that in Eye of the Beholder, you know, they hinted that maybe Samantha was around in 1682, but they never established whether or not that picture was real or whether that was something Endora just zapped up to mess with Darren. So, but Samantha saying that she was a child during the Salem witch trials, there's no more doubt. It's right there. That being said, when Serena goes back to the exact same time and sees her her kind of 17th century version of herself, she's an adult. They're the same age. Serena should also be a child. So I don't know what happened with that. Um, a lot about the bed warmer. Um, like Samantha sees it coming. You know, she, she's outside there. She sees this thing coming. Does she dart back in the door to join the tour? No, she stands there and waits for it to float and block the door. Um, I didn't quite understand that. And I also don't understand why Norton, I'm Norton, sorry, wrong end, uh, Newton um, thinks that 
Samantha is Serena in, in the supply closet there because he was there for the entire conversation with Samantha. He even somehow knew which car to float into. He knows Samantha is Samantha and married because, you know, he was there for interacting, uh, Samantha interacting with Darren. So uh, he might have kept his lid open, his uh, lid closed and his ears open or whatever that was, but he wasn't doing it for that. Now, uh, and in terms of my rating, I love these episodes, but I am going to dissent a little bit and give it three stars. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, uh, it's my turn. I love these episodes. Um, I just think I just think they're they're fun. Uh, I think the Salem saga is a little more fun and a little more funny than Samantha's hot bed warmer. But um, I love the scene with Endora on the wing. I just think it's I, I just it's great. I just love it. Um, and and as Mike said about when she pops into the plane i think the whole thing you know it's like the passengers the other passengers should have had like more reaction um you know uh, the uh, the one lady is like she sees her and she's freaking out a little bit to begin with but then i guess she took her sedatives or something and she's like just <laughs> sitting there you know, like nothing ever happened. But then when Endora pops in and she pops the guy out, it's like, yeah, nobody, nobody sees anything. Nobody reacts. They all just kind of sit there. So that, you know, that, yeah, that was a little, a little odd. Uh, one blooper, if you look, when they show the plane flying in the air and then when they, uh, are at the after it lands and they're at the airport and they show them coming off the plane you can see that the logos are different uh, it's two totally different planes the one thing that bugs me is the rear screen projections so that friday they were supposed to actually film in front of the witch house and Dick Wilson was actually in Salem and they were supposed to film a, the scene there with him, but it rained all day long so they couldn't do it. So that's why they ended up doing it in Burbank and, or in, in Hollywood and uh, used the rear screen projections of the witch house. Um, but the part that the, where they're driving and they're actually on the ranch where, you, they, where the witch sign is, um, when, they, when, they're you know, when they're driving by it and they stop and everything, they're on the ranch, but then when they change the angle and you're looking directly at them in the car, there's an actual rear screen projection from, uh, somebody said that that's not even Salem, that it's actually like Marblehead or something. But why did they do that? I mean, I think that looks really bad because it doesn't match up at all. It doesn't match up at all. And that really bugs me. They should have just left it with a shot there at the ranch with the, you know, the, the facades there so that everything matched up in the scene um, so the one blooper that I noticed a while back was um, when uh, Samantha is walking when, when they're at the witch's convocation and Samantha is walking and she walks up and Endora and the, the other warlocks are standing up on the rock when the camera pulls back if you look on the, it would be the uh, left-hand side, you can see a folding chair sitting there behind the rock. And then, you know, they cut to a close-up of Samantha, she twitches, and then they, they cut back, and she's flying up onto the rock, that folding chair is gone. But, um... I do love these episodes, um, but uh, you know because I, that rear screen projection thing really bugs the heck out of me, and it always has. I'm giving this three and a half stars. Okay, so uh, we're gonna take a break, and when we come back. Uh, we'll uh, average out the ratings and get the overall rating for uh, the Salem Saga and Samantha's Hot Bed Warmer. But uh, right now, uh, we're going to see the very first Twitch Talk music video. Wait a minute. What? 
What was that? What, what's going on? Is there a power surge or something? <laughs> What it is, bewitched dudes and dudettes? Dig our supernatural sitcom and want to get all inside a city about it? Come in! Come on in, y'all! The Bewitched Continuum gives you a happening insider scope out of the show's continuity. 
treating the whole series like one big episode from the pilot to the final installment. And you probably know Bewitch never had an official finale. Bogue man! Enter I, Samantha, take this mortal Darren, which pits Samantha against the Witches' Council in their last indigenous battle. Hey, did I say last? The Stevenses get more solid adventures in sequel Samantha 70s, bringing the magic all the way to the end of said funkadelic decade. The Bewitch Continuum, I, Samantha, take this mortal Darren, and Samantha 70s. The most primo way to get into Bewitched. Righteous! Did you know that in the fall of 1970, Baskin Robbins introduced the bewitched flavor of ice cream? It was vanilla with crunchy pieces of orange and licorice. Posters featuring Elizabeth Montgomery, Agnes Moorhead, and Aaron Murphy were displayed in each store to promote the limited edition flavor with the slogan, It's Super Naturally. According to Aaron Murphy, it was horrible and promptly melted into the sunset. Fashion-wise for this series is showing contrast between people and how they fit into their environment. There's a lot of brown and pale blues in Salem and Sam is kind of in her own thing because she's a little bit of everyone. When they leave for the trip, Endora has her Poochie-esque Endora thing. Tapitha has a print and Sam is just a classic white coat, which I think she just looks so lovely in. And then on the plane, her dress has a brown pattern and Darren is in a brown suit with texture and they're practically blending into the seats until you see Endora out on the wing and the sky, which is connecting with the blue in Sam's dress, which just saves it from drabness. And one of the very best parts is Miss Ferndale in her pioneer dress which is also real reminiscent of the 70s. Yeah, like gunny sacks and stuff like that. You know, like we've, we've, we've been there. But then when she comes into court, it's easily one of the most stylish outfits that anyone is wearing in Bewitched ever. It's separate and polka dots and shiny shoes. So Miss Ferndale, Miss Ferndale's awesome, man. It's like whatever century she's in, she's ready to go. Hey, well, welcome back. And uh, I'm just partaking in a little bit of this delicious bewitched ice cream from Baskin Robbins. Mmm. Mmm. Still fresh after 51 years. Karen <laughs> was right. It's nasty. Um. So um, we're gonna go back and we're going to uh, we're gonna average out the uh, the ratings. But first, uh, let's just kind of recap everybody's uh, ratings on the two episodes: uh, the Salem Saga and Samantha's Hot Bed Warmer. Uh, Anna, four stars. June, four stars. Susan, four stars. Taylor, four stars. David, four stars. Mike, three stars. And I gave it three and a half. So when we average out the rating for the Salem Saga and Samantha's Hot Bed Warmer, we come up with 3.78571. So, we will round that up to four stars. Yay! Join us for the next episode of Twitch Talk, where we'll be discussing Bewitched episode number 205, Darren on a Pedestal. What can I so uh, that wraps up our season premiere episode. Um, thanks everybody for being here. I want to thank uh, 
Adam Michael James and David Pierce, and our Twitch Talker panel, June, Susan, Taylor, and Anna. Join us next time, and in the meantime, best Twitches, everyone! Yay! Bye! <laughs>